What's up, homies, and welcome to another episode of Heroes Reforged Reads a Comic Book. This episode <laughs> is another spin-off title or related title in the Invincible Comics universe. We're talking Super Patriot, specifically America's Fighting Force by writer Robert Kirkman and artist Corey Walker, who are the writer-artist combo that invented and created Invincible. And this is a comic book that they worked on before they got to Invincible. So it is a spinoff. The first thing I want to get out of the way right off the bat is I didn't know where in the Invincible timeline this comic book was going to take place. A few mm -hmm. weeks ago, we read Brit, Volume 1, and we determined mm -hmm. that eventually lines up with the events in Invincible, Volume 4, Head of the mm -hmm. Class, like pretty perfectly. Yeah. A, a, a big moment, a little crossover panels. It was really cool. It was a great payoff. Didn't know if we were going to get anything like that in Super Patriot. In fact, I would say, and I want to hear your gentlemen's thoughts, this takes place completely before Invincible, like entirely I would before. agree. Because would agree. this story features the main character, Super Patriot, real name Johnny something. I forgot what Johnny's last name was. Johnny Super Patriot. Johnny, Johnny Super Lawrence. Patriot. Uh, Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Joey Lawrence. Whoa. <laughs> Joey Lawrence. Uh, meeting and starting to date a woman named Claire. When mm -hmm. we get to Invincible later, after the events of Mark Grayson getting superpowers in high school, mm -hmm. fighting off his father, joining there. the Guardians of the Globe, Claire at that point is married to Super Patriot, and they yes. have a marriage that they're working on, and then Claire befriends Invincible's mom, Debbie, Debbie. Grayson. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I would say that this doesn't line up with any of those events, but rather it all takes place before. Would you guys concur? Concurred. I a concur. Okay, very good. <laughs> so I've never read this comic book. Adam's never read this comic book. Augustine's never read this comic book. Adam, I want to start with you. Mm -hmm. Overall thoughts, Super Patriot, America's Fighting Force. What'd you think of the character? What'd you think of the writing? What'd you think of the art? And what'd you think of the story? So I think the big thing for me with these spinoff books is regardless of the fact that whether or not they completely like directly influence Invincible or not, the main story, I still am enjoying getting to know these characters and it was cool to find out, you know, about Patriot, Super Patriot's kids. We get a lot of flashbacks into his past. Mm -hmm. There are some fun references to, 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 you know, characters that are obviously a huge influence for, for this particular character, which I thought was really great. And I think just like with the with last one with Brit, it's nice to dive deep into the Invincible world for five or so issues and then to jump out of it and focus on another character and another story. So I, I actually really, really liked it, and I thought it did some really fun, interesting things with the villain of the book and how they bring him back. And I was like, <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. We're actually like really leaning into <laughs> Nazis and, and Adolf. And Not just the villain of the book, the villain of the world yeah. <laughs> in real life. In real life, yeah. And I was like, this is really, okay, this is, this, yeah. oh, all right, I get, you know. Right. But it very much reminded me of, you know, Captain America, Red Skull, Germany, you know, World mm -hmm. War II, all this kind of stuff. In so I, I, I really enjoyed all that. In case anybody's watching this and they haven't read the comic book for whatever like, reason, what? which is fine, <laughs> uh, the villain of the book is Adolf Hitler's brain in a giant monkey body. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> giant mech monkey mech. body. Giant robot. Giant so, mech Mechie. robot monkey body. I read yes. some of the great, like, sketchbook section in the back of the book, and they give you a little bit more history and context. Mm -hmm. This was a character not created by Robert Kirkman. But yeah. created by Eric Larson for the comic book Savage Dragon. Mm -hmm. And Savage Dragon makes a few appearances in this book. He also makes some early appearances in Invincible, and I think we'll see him later at some point, which is a really cool kind of crossover. And Savage Dragon is a long-time running indie superhero character like Spawn. Like, he's one of the mm -hmm. big characters, it's not Marvel or DC, that has been consistently written and drawn by Eric Larson for like... 20 going on 30 years maybe wow. like it's an incredible achievement and uh robert kirkman loves savage dragon and really wanted to work on this character and um at one point in the savage dragon world adolf hitler's brain is put into a regular gorilla's body like a right. big gorilla and it was destroyed in the pages of savage dragon so robert kirkman and Corey Walker in the Just back. Just lifted it. They were saying, yeah. they were like, wouldn't it be funny if instead of putting his brain in a regular person robot body or like a regular person body like he could again, that he just went and got a mech gorilla. <laughs> and they thought that was so funny that they really leaned into it. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. <laughs> it's, this, this book is absolutely wild in the ideas that it's putting forth. Like, first of all, a guy named Super Patriot whose arms and legs turn into guns. Okay. <laughs> How more American can you get than that? His pretty stupid son 
and is like he's really valley stupid. girl daughter yeah. like she could care less that she's a superhero right? i had one of those moments reading this book where i was like <laughs> man they really made that daughter attractive and i was like <laughs> How old is she? And then exactly. at the end of the book, she's like, I'm in know. my 30s, dad. And I was like, yeah. okay. <laughs> okay. Make sure that's okay. Um, they, they, so I think the idea is, is way out there. And I think it's early exploration uh, for Robert Kirkman because it's kind of, kind of, uh, it feels like the idea forming for Invincible where mm-hmm. crazy things like a mech Hitler robot gorilla suit can happen. Um, also wild superheroes with arms and guns and stuff like that. And also, uh, pretty cool side characters. I did like the, the design and, um, the role that Hitler's first right hand man kind of played in this mm-hmm. whole thing as well, where was the was, name, was the character's name Blitzkrieg? Blitzkrieg. There you go. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. his name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. Yeah, he was a character named Blitzkrieg. So I yeah. do like that. And I also really like the drawing style and the de- character design overall of mm-hmm. all this stuff. Really I think they clean. did a really good job. The first time the uh, mech gorilla suit shows up, it was really impressive because it was gigantic. I didn't expect something that big to come forward. Um, there was also the writing was pretty clever sometimes. I think one of my favorite parts was after he had slept with uh, what's her name? Claire. With Claire, yeah, uh, and it's just panel, panel, panel of him dead face or deadpan, and and then he goes, "I'm going to hell," and I swear I've seen Adam <laughs> that look on Adam's face before. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I've seen it before, so oh, I was like, I "Oh we, man, that's something Adam would have said." Yeah, that's great. <laughs> I, and also to go off of what you're saying, Augustine, like it does mm-hmm. feel early <clears throat> developmental stages. For yeah. Invincible. Also, this book feels more like Brit than it does Invincible, I think. There's yes, some similar totally. themes. Mm-hmm. But everything you're saying is true. It's so wacky and so fun and it's so consistent. And yet, Robert Kirkman really is focusing on the sort of um, life drama of this character. He's trying to inject some of that into Super Patriot. I think he's mm-hmm. trying to, similar to, similarly to Brit, where he had a crazy idea where it's like, he's dating a young stripper. And sometimes he makes jokes that are very crass about the age difference or whatever. But then later, they're having Brit meet the, the, that character's like parents, and he's really committed to her, and they're very mature about it. And it's the same sort of thing with this. We have Claire as this woman who is incredibly attractive. And also, this whole book has a lot of like TNA. This whole book has a lot of oh, like yeah. very 90s, very so. cheesy, like... The men are very muscular, but the women are like, like his daughter is like, okay, this, that's your costume. It's just <laughs> yeah. a bra. Like what, like yeah. what kind, you know, this, what is yeah. this, which blade, what is this? This is crazy. Right. But right. he, he does this thing with Claire where she's a young woman who sort of meets him on the street outside of his work or whatever, hits on him, asks him out at some point confesses like, I like older guys. So it's a little bit of that Brit creepiness creeping in where you're like, okay, where's he going with this? Right. But yeah. then I think before the series can get to it, we see Robert Kirkman revisiting this concept later when Super Patriot and Claire are like a, a committed couple. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He's, right. He paid that off in Invincible. And I think Invincible itself is the culmination of some of these ideas where it is crazy, zany superhero stuff that's just, you know, beat after beat after beat, these great characters and great villains and superhero action. But we keep being con- con- consistently like uh, invested in Johnny and Claire, or Mark and Debbie and uh, Nolan, or Brit, you know, Brittany, Brit and his girlfriend, or, you know, fiance, yeah. wife, or whatever. I yeah. think that that's what he's trying to do. He's also, he's, he's kind of trying to have that fun, cheesy comic book, really corny world, but also be like, but I want to have a little bit of maturity in here. I want to have yeah. a little bit of, you know, and it, this is a comic book that has Adolf Hitler's brain in a robot, ape, <laughs> you know? A sen- also, a sentient brain. Like, yeah. he yeah, picks could- the brain out of it, and he's like, no, don't leave me, I'm, like, the, leave me alone, unhand me, or something like that. The other thing I wanted to talk yeah. to you guys about... Wait, much, real, real yeah, quick, before you move it, on to that, Hector, uh, to, to go back to the beefcake and the cheesecake yeah. art, is that what it's called, beefcake and cheesecake art? Listen, I, that's what I call it. I know... I know it's a term. There's I know for, for years, it. cheesecake art is what they would call the art of artists like J. Scott Campbell, yeah. who did like Danger Girl and all the sort of right, sexy right. pinup art and stuff like that of the yes. 90s, or maybe some like Jim Lee stuff from the 90s. Yes. You know you right. know what I'm talking about. The, so that, yeah. 
There is a little bit of that here, but the moment that really turned it around for me that changed it from like, once again, creepy old guy with young girl mm -hmm. is the moment at the poker table. Do you guys remember that moment where, yes. where one of his friend's wives was from serving at the table from World War II and he's like, oh, she just loves to do this stuff. And he's like, dude, I can't stand this. Like yeah. invite your wife to a game. And then he just walks out of the room because he doesn't like the way this mm -hmm. guy is treating his wife. Right. Mm -hmm. And she and was so a, she's I, a former superhero herself. Like they were yes. like World War II era heroes. Yeah. Right. So it's little moments like this that real because if there wasn't a moment like this, it would feel like super cheesy and just kind of like super macho and, you know, mm -hmm. that yeah. toxic masculinity type thing. But to see a guy stand up for something he doesn't feel is right as far as gender rules go or gender gender norms. Uh, I, I think that really kind of speaks out because I don't know mm. a lot of people who were doing it at that time either, you know, I even though he did have that kind of beefcake and cheesecake art. I think that that ties into what I was about to bring up, which is the only other moment that I think is very interesting, which is Robert Kirkman is using this World War II era hero, but I don't think he ever was frozen like Captain America. He's just been active since World War II, and he has an origin similar to Steve Rogers, and he has this old school mentality. Um, in the 70s, there's a flashback where a corporation's being like picketed, and there's like a mob of, of people protesting yes. this corporation. Mm. And Super Patriot shows up when he had a different costume and he was younger, but it was the 70s. And you think he's going to beat up on these cops that are beating the shit out of protesters. And instead, he starts beating up the protesters. And yeah. he's like, leave these people alone. They're hardworking Americans, whatever. And at first, I'm reading this and I'm like, all right, I don't know if Robert Kirkman is sort of out of touch or like, you know, where is he going with this? Is he setting up this character to be like the comedian from Watchmen? Like, is that what he's doing on purpose? Or then I turn the page and there's a whole panel where as a hippie is yep. being dragged away by cops. The hippie's like, what are you doing, man? These guys are fascists. You're not in World War II anymore. You're not just fighting Nazis. The world is different. And it impacted him. It affected him. And then later when we see him in the present, Super Patriot in his civilian clothes is wearing a, a, a shirt with the peace sign, with the American flag motif in a peace sign. And I'm like, he's got a ponytail. You know, the the issue, the, the incident at the poker game, like you just described, Augustine, is I think Robert Kirkman trying to inject some, like a like a, an evolution to this character and how some he changed thinking. Yeah. over the years and some forward thinking. And he may be very old school in a lot of ways, but I think Robert was uh, was attempting to sort of, you know, move this character in an interesting place to be like, let's talk about some stuff. How would mm -hmm. this guy think about certain issues? How would he think about social issues? How would he think, you know, and, uh, on top of superhero stuff? Yes, let's go beat up Nazis, of course, but also this other thing. And, and I think that the poker game was sort of the proof of that, that in the present day, he was like, come on, yeah. man, don't do that shit. I hate right. it. It's, it's right. messed up. She was a superhero. Treat her with respect. And you're like, OK, OK, he's going to go out with this yeah. young woman. He's yeah. going to sleep with her. He's going to say, I'm going to hell. But later when we see him in Invincible, he shows up to her like, hi, honey, like when she's at work. Yeah. So I'm yeah. like, yeah, you yeah. know, he's getting there. He's getting there. He, he, he's getting there. And I think he does get there by, by the time that book was written. Because by the time we see that interaction, it feels like the two characters are already kind of fleshed out. Mm -hmm. Totally. You know, totally. like Super Patriot is Super Patriot and has existed because Mark even fanboys over Super Patriot, yep. his mom meeting Super Patriot. So yep. that's what got me really excited to read this uh, because I wanted to see that 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 hype behind him. Mm -hmm. The only thing I'm disappointed about is that we didn't get to see where his mech arms really came from. We got to see his his right. his transformation, his Steve Rogers transformation, but we didn't get to see the it, tech arms. It would have been great. There's some other Super Patriot comics out there. There's, in fact, I think there's even one, and I don't know if it came, I'm pretty sure it came out after this. I think there's even one where in the comic itself is the flip side scene of the one from Invincible, where it shows Super Patriot going to see Claire, and then in the background, Debbie is there in the oh. office. So I'll have to do a little bit of research and find where that what that okay. book is. But what I, what I was going to say was, it would have been awesome is if this trade paperback, this collection was like all-encompassing history and origin of super patriot that's mm -hmm. what i was kind it would have been great for it yeah. would have been great because i don't i'm not going to go back and read savage dragon from the beginning just for this invincible read through like maybe right, i'll do that right. someday but like i'm like oh man i wish it was a trade that could just tell me all the important stuff and this this yeah. one already had some flashbacks so yeah. maybe another a couple would have been uh, uh, beneficial how, so. how did it leave you feeling adam because i feel like you, since you're not as invested in the invincible universe as we are yet did it, yeah yet Keyword yet, uh, did this did this leave you wanting to read more of Super Patriot, or are you just like, ah, eh, we can move on? 
I, I liked it. And I think the two things that I really enjoyed was every issue kind of almost starts exactly the same way. Like he's woken up at 5 a.m. by his obnoxious alarm clock of people spitting facts on the radio. And he's like, oh, I got to get up and do this shit again. Oh, I'm getting too old for this shit. Uh, so I really enjoyed that album. I liked the repetition and sort of like it humanized him a little bit more um, outside of having these incredible powers and having, you know, yeah, these cybernetic arms and all these things. And I think the other thing that I like that I would hope that maybe future issues dive into a little bit more is the PTSD element. We see a few moments, several moments. Oh yeah, where he has P- where he's suffering PTSD, and he even has one where he thinks he blows her head off, and then all of a sudden you realize you're like with a dream within a dream of sorts. And that I thought was it was brutal. Yeah, and I thought it was interesting to to touch on those things. And like you guys were saying, the moment, the flashback to the '70s where we are really bringing up these like social issues and what his thoughts are, and trying to really like define the world to him as someone who's been around for. You know, at that point, I guess he'd been around for about 30, 40 years. So I like that about it. And I think if you're going to introduce a character into this world that is kind of your Captain America, right? then I want to understand how that character works in this world Mm -hmm. and what is his moral compass. What, you know, like we know he is for better or for worse, he is heroic of sorts, but he does shoot and kill people. Yeah. You know, it's so like, what is that like moral boundary line? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. I really did enjoy the quips that he has with his son and his daughter and, you know, why how he's is like, his son oh. so stupid? Why is his <laughs> son <laughs> so stupid? Why is his daughter so aloof? Like, she yeah. could care less if she's I'm just having a weekend right. with my boyfriend, okay? Yeah, yeah. Like, exactly. I get it, but I mean, okay. like, hello. <laughs> That's That also left me like, I don't know, kind of, Kind of up in the air because I don't know if I want to read more Super Patriot. Sure. Like this was a fun side, yeah. You know, like a, a fun it's a add-on. very low lift read. Yeah. Yes, it's very low, it's very light. It. it doesn't have a lot of impact on the, mm. on the superhero world, but also mm-hmm. it didn't leave me wanting like, oh damn, I gotta read more Super Patriot yeah. at all, at all. Brit, it just Brit like, did a little bit of a better job of kind of leaving yeah. like, oh, I want to, I want to taste this. I want a Especially, little bit more of this. Yeah, the ending yeah. of that Brit where he's like, yeah. leave me the fuck alone. And yeah. you're like, what is going to happen yeah. next? Yeah. I'm like, what's you're, the part two you here? You guys are totally yeah. right. You guys are totally right. And I think it's Robert Kirkman had not really like solidified his writing. Yeah. I think you're right. You know, philosophy up to this point. And um, yeah, I'm, I, I'm in this exact same boat, Augustine. Like, I like this. I'm not mad that I read it. But I'm also not. Uh, uh, I'm still glad that I read it. I'm. I'm glad I didn't like miss out on it. You know, I'm not gonna say. Yeah, like, yeah we I feel the same it. way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't feel like I. I don't feel like I've like. I'm not sitting here being like, oh, I wish I would have got my 45 minutes no. back or whatever. No, no. no. I, I still <laughs> had fun enough. reading it. Yeah. I'm going to put it on my shelf before all my Invincible trades, slot that right in there, and that makes me a happy camper. That's where it's, <laughs> you know, it's part of the collection. The completionist, yes, I'm in. of course. It's great. I will do a little bit more research yeah. and see if there's any other uh, Super Patriot Invincible-related material mm. and mm-hmm. paperbacks, and maybe we can get to that stuff later, and that's cool. But um, for now, boys, I think we're about to make a very exciting announcement. It's a little sex sighting, I would say. <laughs> and that announcement is, for those of you reading along with Invincible, we're going to take a one-week pause because we have a very exciting book that we're going to divert and read. And then right after that, the week after, we're going to get right back into Invincible. Volume 6 is where six. we're at. Mm-hmm. Volume 6. Uh, but the next book that we're going to pause to take a break, take a breather, and read, we're going to pivot, we're going to look over here. There's a TV show coming out in January that we're very excited about. So we are going to read together and put out an episode next week. Tom King's The Vision, the complete series. 12 issues. Gabriel Hernandez Walta is the artist. Tom King is the writer. We are reading The Vision and seeing and talking about it and seeing how much of it may or may not play into WandaVision and we're stoked about it. So, I have yeah. not read this comic book. Neither have I. Ooh. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a minute since I've read it. It's been a few years. It's been a few years, like a year or two, possibly. Yeah. Uh, and it's very, very good. And I cannot wait to read it with these guys. So stay tuned for that. And for anybody that's not watching this Invincible video, I just guess you're going to get a surprise uh, Vision <laughs> comic next week video. Like, that's what you guys are going to get. So, um, so It's mostly uh, everybody on the Discord. Everybody I, I think Discord. everybody so, on the Discord is, is watching these videos. Yeah. So thank you. So, uh, Augustine was researching. It is available on Hoopla. 
which is the for library mm-hmm. volumes app. one and two for free. Yep. You just need a library card, library account. Volumes one and two, the vision, you know, six issues, then six issues. Mm-hmm. Um, otherwise, it's like rentable on Comixology. It is all available on Marvel Unlimited if you have that service, which I think is a great value because you get to read the full series of great comics like this. Or and you can um, Amazon it or yeah, whatever you want. Yeah, absolutely. It's all there. It's all there. So, uh, yeah, I would say. It's good enough to just blind order, which is which is which is crazy. It's me saying a lot, but it is good enough to blind get a physical copy of it, and then uh, wait for it to arrive, and then um, then you can watch our review on it. So yeah, Hector, I don't think you have any idea how much money I've spent on your blind order recommendations. <laughs> I have, I don't know if you could see it, but down there, Woo! that whole section, half of it is invincible. Nice, nice, nice. Let me see if I can move. Half of it is invincible right there. And My the friend. Other half, that's Hector's recommendations all well, on this side. I hope that so far I have not <laughs> let you down, and I'm going to continue to try to not let you down, but I so, so appreciate that faith, brother, and I think you're really going to... Inj- I cannot wait to to talk about this book with you guys. Yeah, this is going to yeah. be awesome. And then we're going to be so prepped for WandaVision that when we're watching the show, we're going to be like, that's from the comic. That's from the got comic. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like like uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, just, you know, mm, mm, beer. Mm. Mm. Beer and cigarette. Mm. Yep. Mm. <laughs> yep. Totally. It's going to be great. All right. Well, so now that's our video on uh, Super Patriot. Be sure to um, share your thoughts with us in the comments below. <laughs> Head over to the Discord that Augustine mentioned. It's a rad place to be. A lot of great conversations about <clears throat> everything, which is super, super cool. Um, if you like this video, please like it. Please subscribe. If you haven't already, tell your friends about it. Read Invincible from the beginning. Catch up with us. Go get the vision so you can read it and then watch our video about it. And then you can discuss it with us, which we're so, so excited about. And we have a Patreon. If you want more bonus stuff, we've got a Q&A in the month of January, which is really mm-hmm. exciting. We just did a live watch along of Wonder Woman 1984. We got another one in January. So if you want to go check out our Patreon, link is in the description below. You can check all that out. Otherwise, we'll see you jabronis later. <laughs> Peace.